Uh, my name is Ryan Means with Stem Ciders out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, we're here at Natural Grocers off of Brighton, and uh, we're just here to kind of taste the public on some of uh, some local Colorado ciders. So, uh, what I'll start you guys off with is our Lassier. Lassier is a wonderful cider. It's uh, it's a blend of all Michigan apples. Um, this is really unique for us. Uh, we, you know, for our canned products. We like to use a lot of uh, juice from the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, stuff like that. Apples are a little more readily available up there than they are in Colorado or Michigan even. Uh, and so for this one, what we wanted to do is we wanted to show people the difference in the terroir between Colorado and Pacific Northwest and Michigan apples. So these are a blend of Michigan apples. Um, we do, uh, so this one's called Lassier. It's uh, French for the steel. Uh, Lassier is really cool because it's all Michigan apples, but it only sees uh, a fermenter, a stainless steel fermenter. We take the same blend of apples and we let that sit in a red Zinfandel barrel for nine months. And that's how we get Le Chien. Le Chien is French for the oak. And uh, I'll pour that for you guys as well. Uh, Le Chien's wonderful. So uh, in 2015, this was rated the second best cider in the world by ciderjournal.com. Uh, may not mean a lot to some people, but it's a nice feather in our hat. You know, it made us feel really good that somebody was paying attention to us and saw the creativity and the, uh, the passion behind our cider. Uh, what I love about the Le Chien is that there's vanilla and there's caramel, but you still get that oak tannin. Uh, you still get this really bright, crisp apple from it, and it's all Michigan juice. So again, it's a really nice way to tell the difference between the terroir between Michigan and Colorado and Pacific Northwest. Um, and speaking of, I'll, uh, I'll give you guys Crabby Neighbor next. Um, what's really interesting about Crabby Neighbor is if you notice our cans, uh, our cans are a blend of about 14 different apples. The Lassier and Le Chien are also a blend of about 10 to 12 different apples. Crabby Neighbor is really fun because it's two. It's Crab Apple and Granny Smith, uh, which is really fun. You get that big Granny Smith right up front, a lot of green apple. And then the Crab Apple provides a really nice uh, kind of tart, acidic bite on the end. Uh, makes it really sharp, um, but just adds a little bit of depth to it. So I'll pour that for you guys as well. Uh, Crabby Neighbor is really fun for me. Um, it's a really good transition. Uh, if you're really into sour beers, this is a great tart acidic uh, cider that can kind of help uh, help translate or help transition you from sour beer to a good craft cider. Uh, one thing we really pride ourselves over at STEM on is that we use fresh juice in all of our products. So there's no concentrate, there's no extract, we don't add sugars to anything, it's all fresh juice. So. For the Krabby Neighbor, it's just, if you look at the ingredient list, it is uh, literally fresh pressed apple juice. We introduce yeast um, to ferm as a ferm fermenting agent. Uh, it ferments it completely dry, so we've got no residual sugar in those products. Uh, when, you, when it comes down to like raspberry, the ingredients in raspberry are literally fresh pressed apple juice and raspberries. We get our apple juice for that cider from the Pacific Northwest, and then we add a fresh raspberry puree from Oregon. Um, so it's all fresh. Like we genuinely care, uh, you know, about cider. And you know, I will always say, you know, Angry Orchard did a really good job of popularizing the word cider. Stem is here to show people what it should taste like. Um, so with that being said, I'll, I'll kind of run you guys through a couple of our uh, our canned series. We'll start with the uh, the real dry. Uh, I've got some real dry for you. So real dry is fun. Um, most comparable to what you've had recently, uh, Lassier or the Krabby Neighbor, Real Dry is just all Pacific Northwest apples. So Washington and Oregon, uh, what we do is we take those apples, we send them to a press out there, they press them and they send us the juice in a big tanker truck. And we take that tanker truck, download it straight into our tanks. Um, the reason that we do that is because, again, you know, apples are just bountiful there. You know, if we have a bad harvest in Colorado, there are a lot of uh, cideries that will not get their apples, and that's hard. So we've looked elsewhere, uh, but we, while looking elsewhere, we've wanted, to, you know, a, a big thing for us is making sure that we're getting apples from the right place, making sure that we're getting fresh juice. Um, you know, all, again, all of our ciders are fresh juice. Uh, there's no concentrate or extract, so we pride ourselves on that. Yeah. Um, so what we do with with our hop cider is we take the real dry. And then we throw Cascade and Citra hops in it for five days. And we let the, uh, we let the hops sit in there for five days at a time. Uh, and what it does is it brings a lot of aroma to the table. So you get uh, fresh cut grass, you get tropical fruit, a lot of citrus. Um, 
But my favorite thing is no bitterness at all. So we've got you know people who come in and they're like, ah, you know, we've been out to all these breweries, and this person only drinks cider, so we're here at the cidery. I only drink beer. What should I get? Well, what kind of beer do you drink? It's always my first question. Nine times out of ten, people are like, I love IPAs. Well, if you love IPAs, this is great because you get all the hop aroma without the bitterness. You still get that bright, crisp apple. You can still taste the apples in it, and you can tell it's fresh juice. Um, but you get this wonderful aroma from the Cascade and the Citra hops, which is I think really unique. Uh, when you have a, a little bit of a sweeter cider, uh, sometimes that sweetness can kind of dull the aroma and the flavor profile of the hops. So with our cider being bone dry, um, it really gives us the opportunity to showcase the hops and, uh, and kind of pull some of those craft beer drinkers into the craft cider community. Uh, and with that being said, we've got raspberry up next. Raspberry is my personal favorite. This is probably what I drink the most of. Um, what I love about it is it pours pink. Uh, it's this big ruby hue. Uh, it's really fruity. You get these big kind of sweet fruity raspberry uh, notes on the nose. It smells like you're smashing up fresh raspberries in your hand, but when you taste it, it's tart and tannic and dry. It's really pretty. And it's a really good example of, you know, showcasing a cider that has all the idea of being sweet without actually containing any sugar. There's no residual sugar in that cider at all. All the naturally occurring sugar in an apple is fermentable. So we ferment that completely dry. The yeast get tired and they start to go to sleep. We pitch some fresh raspberries in there. They wake up, they get excited, they eat all the sugar out of the raspberries. And then we've got an incredible cider that comes in at about 